right, so let's begin the show. And today we're going to focus about focus on your mutual fund uh, uh, switch and exit strategy. So it's very important to understand uh, if at all you are a mutual fund investor, uh, what should be the right time to exit a fund? And for example, if you want to switch. Uh, your funds within the AMC. What is the procedure and why should you be doing that? Uh, let's uh, understand all of this. I have with me uh, Mrin Agrawal, founder director of Insafe. Uh, Mrin, good evening. Welcome to the show. And uh, so we've seen a sea of red in the market today, and uh, you know a lot of investors who are not used to seeing this kind of volatility uh, uh, would be just looking at the portfolio today and uh, might have uh, thought of maybe rebalancing or re allocating their portfolio. Uh, uh, having said that, you know, it's very important for you to also revamp and reallocate your portfolio when you see it's, it's when you see a disbalance as far as diversification is concerned. Okay. Uh, a lot of time investors uh, think of exiting a fund or maybe switching a fund. I just want to understand or maybe just in layman language if you could understand if you could help us understand what do you mean by exiting a mutual fund and what do you mean by switching a fund? So good afternoon, Kavita, and it's lovely to be here today. Um, well, uh, firstly, as far as exiting a fund means that you're exiting the entire holdings from that particular fund uh, and probably putting it into your bank account, right? The money is going to come into your bank account. But when you switch from one fund to the other fund, it means that you're exiting one particular fund and you're moving the same amount, whatever the redemption amount is, into uh, another fund. So that's what the difference is. In one case, you're moving it to another fund. In one case, you're moving it to your bank account. All right. Now, looking at the current scenario and uh, uh, looking at the market volatility and also for all those investors, you know, who might be seeing a lot of returns coming up in their mid cap and small cap fund. Let's assume they want to switch their mutual fund first on what conditions or what criteria you should be taking a decision of switching a mutual fund and when we talk about switching it just means within an AMC you go from one fund to the other right how can you uh, 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 switch your uh, uh, funds within a within an AMC and should you be doing it now uh, yeah, that, I mean, certainly you should not be doing it if you've been in the fund for a very short term period, right? And yeah, this is what, you know, the scenarios that we're seeing right now is that one, uh, I have made a good return, so should I exit? So these are the questions that investors want to know, that I've made some good returns on my mid cap, small cap, so should I exit? The second set of investors are saying that, hey, I was holding these set of funds and these set of funds have not made great returns. So should I now exit these and move into funds that have had recent very good performance? And then, of course, uh, people are always worried that should I even remain invested at these points? I mean, I could exit market is at a high. I could exit and then I can come back later on. But, you know, for all of these categories of people, what I would say is that first and foremost, it's impossible to time the markets. And when you look at various data that is there and uh, I did share some data uh, from different fund houses, of course, some very interesting data that's been put out on SIP uh, performance and of course the proof of the pudding is seeing the numbers right um, so of course while we say remain invested for the long term this data basically shows you that for example if you take the 2020 period right when due to COVID the markets had fallen fallen by about 35 to 40 percent at that point a lot of people wanted to exit saying that I'm not making any return but the people who actually stayed on uh, the people who exited of course exited at a loss but the people who stayed on made a very very healthy return right so uh, also there's another data point that actually shows that even when you are investing in your sip uh, when the markets are at a peak you're still actually making very good returns and that's because you know the markets are going to keep going up and down and you're basically averaging out your cost so what i would say for all investors who think that i should do profit booking or who feel that my fund hasn't done well or who feel that i can exit right now and re-enter please just remain invested, especially those who've just entered the market a year back. It is just too early for you to exit. And remember, this is how equity markets work. In one year, you will make a great return. Possibly in the next year, you may not get make a great return. And that's why we always say that the average return that you're going to make could be in the range of, let's say, about 10 to 12 percent. You should remember that this 30, 40 percent is not going to happen year on year. At the same time, if you exit right now, you have a reinvestment risk. Where are you going to go invest if you're going to exit your investments right now? 
Also, just coming back on this switching part, is switching uh, 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 treated as uh, uh, redeeming your units? Is it taxable? What is the tax implication involved there? Certainly, it is equivalent to redeeming the units, right? Because you're okay. moving on one fund and you're getting into another fund. Even if you're switching from direct plan to regular plan, uh, also it is treated as a redemption because you're exiting at a particular NAV and you're entering at uh, you know, a, a different fund, right? I mean, the, at the end of the day, uh, whatever scheme, direct plan and regular plan are two different schemes, right? So it is treated uh, as a redemption and hence there is a tax implication. And so if it is an equity fund, if you're exiting before one year, it is going to be taxed at 15%. And if you're exiting after one year, it is going to be taxed at 10% post or cumulative gain across your equity investments of 1 lakh rupees. All right. So can you, uh, you know, when you think, when you go about it, uh, is it possible for you to not to redeem your units and just uh, uh, invest in a different fund uh, instead of switching? Do you really have to switch or you can just stop your investment in a particular fund and then maybe, uh, you know, uh, have one more fund in your portfolio? Absolutely. You could, uh, yes, absolutely. You could just decide to pause your SIP. Right. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, just say that I just don't want to in do any more additional investment through SIP in this fund, but you continue holding the investment, of course, and it continues to uh, move as per the NAV, of course, you have that option and then you could always look at other funds, you know, and, and, you know, I think it's very relevant that we're talking about this because when we look at the NFO data, right, and you're seeing like huge amount of money that's coming into NFOs as well, right? So the, I do see a lot of investors who are, say, who, 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 you know, who, who get very attracted by the NFOs and they, they think that, okay, let me switch from here and let me, you know, get into this NFO because this looks more appealing at this point in time. So I would just caution people to say that uh, don't do that. At the end of the day, any data that you see in the long term always shows you that remaining invested is actually what makes the money and not this moving in and moving out. Exactly. And especially when you are investing via SIP, I think a lot of people men don't understand uh, the way SIPs also work. You know, what they do is they just stop their SIP for a year and then they think that the tax implication, uh, 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 you know, would be different. Uh, uh, how would you like to explain uh, uh, the SIP tax implication? Because you need to ensure that every SIP of yours at least completes one year. If you are a monthly SIP person, you need to make sure that the timeline is completed, right? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, in case of mutual funds, it's always first in, first out. And so, for example, if you're starting a SIP in January, right? So from January 23, let's say you started. So it will complete only in January 24. Similarly, February 23 will complete one year or if the exit load is 18 months. So, you know, it's not only about the taxation. You also have to ensure, especially if it's an equity fund, that uh, you also have to check the exit load before doing a switch or before doing an exit uh, from the investment, right? And as I said, it's first in, first out. So uh, do keep that aspect in mind as well. Uh, these are the nitty-gritties involved in switching your mutual fund. But then, as rightly pointed out by Mrin, that you need to give your fund some time to perform also. And, you know, uh, definitely you can switch your fund and make changes in your portfolio. But then make sure that you uh, have invested uh, or you are invested for a, for, a, for a particular time period and the fund is able to perform. Uh, on that note, thank you so much, Mrin, for being on the show today and helping our viewers with every aspect of switching their mutual fund. Uh, but then we'll take a quick break and post that I'll be joined by Pankaj Madpal will be answering your mutual fund queries. So if in case you want to send across your questions right now, you can watch us live on YouTube and you can also WhatsApp your questions and uh, uh, we will do your live financial planning. So see you after the break.